This is Dolan TV, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another edition of Edmonton Oilers Discussion here on the channel this afternoon. Unless you're joining us for the first time, I appreciate you doing that. As let me tell you, that Battle of Alberta still just got me absolutely through the roof on a high. Let me tell you, that one doesn't get any better than that. That's the question. It probably doesn't. And that's exactly to today's point. Because I was going to do this video on Thursday, alright? I, I had this thought on Thursday. A lot of American NHL fans were complaining that NBS, NBCSN didn't have the Battle of Alberta on the Wednesday night rivalry game. Now, traditionally speaking in the U.S. market, saying, oh, we're going to have an all-Canadian matchup on the big night of the week on NBS, NBC or NBCSN, whatever they, uh, whatever they broadcast on on Wednesday nights, that would be probably a dud. Let's just be serious. That would be a dud. But everything, every ounce of energy across Canada and a majority of the United States as well poured effort into the Battle of Alberta on Wednesday night. Well, let me tell you. What does that tell you, right? Obviously, okay. Every ounce of effort. That was must-watch TV Wednesday night. A must-watch game for not just Oilers, Flames, Canadian fans, everybody across the hockey universe should have and needed to be watching that game on Wednesday. Problem is, that's not the best game of the two. Saturday night, far and above, was the best game of the two. But okay, let's just, for a second, think about that logically, right? We hyped up Wednesday so much. It was beyond the most hyped up game I've seen the Oilers play in years. Like I said, prior to 16's or 17's playoffs, probably a long time back into the 90s, or playoffs, I guess, Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Final, but even at that, the Battle of Alberta, oh my goodness, best game of the Battle of Alberta in forever. The Game 7 Stanley Cup Final, that's just what it was in 06. That's a whole nother lane of memories, and we need to not talk about that for a while, but let me tell you, that was a hyped-up game. Now, we get into Saturday. It was a quick turnaround. There was the munching about uh, Giordano maybe uh, having to take a... A little bit of uh, retribution against him for that Connor McDavid hit. Of course, there were the storylines of this, that, and the other thing, right? Is the Kachuk Kazian thing over? Canuck or Kazian Ronaldo? And stuff's still going on. And of course, it's just shifting to Calgary, so the Oilers fans have to bring the hate. Calgary has to show up in their building, that kind of deal. Edmonton on the back to back. It, it didn't get as much hype, but let me tell you, today, it has gotten more hype post game than it could have possibly ever gotten before the game started. The goalie fight, obviously the headliner, right? That's what we've been talking about since about 11 o'clock last night, or I think it happened at just after 9.30 last night, actual time. We've been talking about it since. It's all over social media. I'm sorry, I don't care if you don't have a stitch of hockey in your life. You've seen the Mike Smith versus Cam Talbot fight if you live in Alberta. That is just facts. Don't deny it. We know what's going on. So, that is, to my point in this video, are the Edmonton Oilers must-watch TV again? Must-watch team, a bandwagon team, that's the fun part. Are they back, baby? That is the question. And, in my honest opinion, 345 in, I'm not going to wait. make you wait any longer. The simple fact, I would say yes. If you're going to get on the Oilers bandwagon, I think this is about as good a time as any. Because let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a prime spot to have some fun here the rest of the way home. Canucks and Carolina Hurricanes currently tied 2-2 with 15.30 to go in that third period. So roughly uh, Canucks could go up another four points in the division standings, but we also would have a game in hand on them again. The Oilers. 52 games played on the NHL season, so they got 30 remaining. 28, 18, and 6 in overtime losses there. 26 row, that's regulation and overtime wins. And a 62-point effort on the season so far. Good four. Oh, you ready for this one? Second. In the Pacific Division. So ladies and gentlemen, right now, currently two points out of first place. It's more than likely the Canucks against the Hurricanes tonight will take it and uh, 
get the two points, and that's fine and dandy. That's all good by me because we're still right there, number two, second fiddle in the Pacific Division, and there ain't no better place to be right now for this Edmonton Oilers team considering how December went, right? Is, I mean, a lot of people were on that bandwagon early October into early November. Everybody was convinced, here we go. And then the doubt set in, the failure of play started setting in, the expectation of losing started setting in as December got a little bleak, got a little dark for our Oilers. But what you need to know is the Oilers went absolutely crazy in the month of January, did some incredible things, only lost one game in regulation despite a 10-day break and having how many games afterwards of that, and we're 1-0 in February already as well. A lot centered around Kyler Yamamoto, but that's to another point, is this Edmonton Oilers team has so many storylines to watch for, and it's because they are finally a more complete team, a team that any NHL fan can invest themselves in. All right, let's list off the possibilities. Number one, if you're going to bandwagon the Edmonton Oilers for the rest of the season into the playoffs, if you're making them must-watch TV and you're not an Oilers fan, you're joining me in the live streams and you're saying, Tyson, why should I be watching the Oilers? Connor McDavid. But I'm actually going to asterisk that. Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. You want to know who's going to finish 1-2 in NHL scoring this year? Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl. That is your number one reason to watch the Oilers as an outside fan. Or if you want to call yourself a bandwagon fan, I know there's a lot of hoopla about that. Well, maybe you do, and maybe that's fine, because I'm going to have you all the same, because it's a good time cheering on the Oilers no matter who you are, especially this season so far. Hopefully this doesn't backfire and uh, bite me in about April 5th, but right now she's looking good, all right? Number two, number two, what is there to like about this Oilers team? How about that second line? All right, yeah, I know Leon Dreisaitl is kind of included in there as well, but the Oilers are not a one-line team anymore. The Oilers have two to three solid lines. We'll find out about the third solid line when Tyler Benson suits up against, hopefully, the Arizona Coyotes on Tuesday. That's the key right there. So, all right, that's three solid lines, and heck, I ain't complaining if the fourth line plays like that every game, right? You wouldn't have the Mike Smith, Cam Talbot goalie fight if it weren't for Haas, Gagne, and Chase on last night. So, hey, we'll give props to our 13th, 14th forwards and, of course, our fourth line all the same. And that's what they're there to do. They're there to just grind it out. And somehow it exploded, being the Battle of Alberta, giving us the best game we've ever watched maybe in my lifetime. Well, good with that. Great to go. So... That's good. That's fine. That's dandy. Now, you need a third reason to watch the Oilers, eh? You need a third reason to watch the Oilers. Well, how about the fact that for the entire month of January, for earlier in the year, and just blackout about November 15th to about December 27th, we've gotten goaltending this year. This team has two goalies who weren't expected to do anything of value this year and have somehow managed to get this team... What was that record again? Hold on. Let me... uh. Let me go get that for you. Shall I? 28, 18, and 6. Yeah, okay, sure, we're 28 and 24, technically win-loss direct, but 28, 24, 28, 18, and 6. So go 34 and 18 in po games we have points to games we don't have points. That's a big-time swing for a lot of people, right? Everybody on the outside that said, oh, the Oilers goaltending is going to doom them. Where is it, my friends? Where is it? I'm asking for a friend because I don't see it. And that's another good reason. And I think the secondary asterisk to that would be simply Mike Smith, KG Vet, right? He's scrapping against Cam Talbot. We love him for that. But we just love Mike Smith because he's a guy here for one last shot of glory. And we're hoping we can deliver it for him. He's got to deliver it for us. We got to deliver it for him. It's a two-side coin that's going to hopefully equal a very good playoff run. Now, the fourth reason you got to bandwagon the Oilers, guys, is because, come on, how long? How long have Canadian hockey fans had to bandwagon the Flames, the Jets, the Leafs, the Canadians? Tell me where in that is fun for not just Oilers fans, but any NHL fan isn't a huge diehard. Like, those Those are the teams 
that are supposed to get the spotlight, right? Those are the teams that are supposed to be all dandy and always be there. Those are the teams expected. But the Oilers haven't had any expectation on them in years. And guess what? For the first time, we have a chance. We have a chance to do something special here. And if you can't get excited by the chance of something special, well then, maybe hockey's just not for you. Because let me tell you, after a game like last night, there's something in the air. There's a smell. There's something there that's going to deliver great hockey the rest of the year. And as I'm saying, are the Oilers must-watch TV the rest of the year for the next 30 games? abso friggin lutely If they're playing Minnesota at 7 p.m. on a Friday, you got to be watching. If you're going to bandwagon, bandwagon my Edmonton Oilers. Bandwagon your Edmonton Oilers. You're still early enough. I'll believe you. I'll believe you. We ain't going to make fun of you. And if you're coming in to the live streams, game one of the Stanley Cup playoffs, hopefully against the Calgary Flames, may I add, well, let me tell you, we'll have you all the same. Guys, I'm Tyson. This is Stolony TV. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on your way out. I will catch you, as always, in the next one.